Good morning. We are starting a new build today and we brought in the big guns. We've got Casey Liddell from Cascade Heavy Wrecker. His dad's here, Monty. Tom Tom, of course. Can't forget Ed. And the rest of the regular crew is here. All right, so the project we're working on is a heavy wrecker. I need a vehicle that's big enough to do the pusher RVs and stuff that get in the sand, but I also want something that can get back on the trails and do winching and, uh, I don't know, wrecker stuff. In this particular video, we are going to be building the frame from scratch and setting these axles under it. We want a roller by the time this video is over. So I've been talking to a lot of great minds. Obviously, I've been talking to Casey about this, talking to Tom, Tom and my team. I've talked to Rory. He's got Trail Mater, which which is a very capable record that he runs out in Moab. Okay, these are our roller tires. This is not what we're gonna be running, but this is what we're gonna be building it on. So the axles that we're using on this are Axletex 4000s. These are huge military axles that go on vehicles that are mine resistant, ambush protected. That's what MRAP stands for. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Today we're gonna learn things. So our vehicle is a little bit different, but it is gonna be a heavy off-road vehicle. So these will be the perfect axles for what we're trying to do. All right, so let's get to it. So this is a cross section of the C channel that we're gonna be making this frame out of. The reason we're using this is because Tom Tom had it in his yard. We're gonna be boxing it with 3 16 plate and making an air tank out of some of the frame. How do you feel about that? I feel great about it. So, lay it across here. Don't go the other way. That one can be over. So if you don't know Casey Liddell, he has a YouTube channel called Casey Liddell. Yeah, that's a super complicated name. And he does recovery, off-road recovery work up around Bend, Oregon and Cascades and all that kind of stuff. Snowcat stuff, Jeeps with tracks stuff, Jeeps without tracks. We just do stuff. Tracks and stuff. If it sounds fun, we do it. Oh, look at that thing. That's a thing. You got tools. See? He... Wow. wow. What kind of tool is that called? <laughs> I don't know, it's an angle thing. Go 98. You really want 98? Yeah, because I'm holding you on one inch. Do you want me to go 99 just to be safe? Do you want your frame on inch longer? Yes, we go 99. This is how I do it, I do it on the fly. Right, no, we better stick to the blueprints. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's how I do it. That's uh, literally I how I do it. Okay, 99. All right, we're getting all the pieces cut out right now so that in a few minutes we can start assembling them into frame right on the left and a right. Got that? Now, I think if we mix it up. high right there and then you need to grind this bevel. So we're, we're trying to make this frame we're trying to hit a target weight of around 1,500 pounds for the complete frame. So we can add we can add quite a bit of strength and not worry about being overweight. Oh, look at this gap. Two and a half. Maybe we should make wanna, a double gap. I don't want to look at that gap, Trevor. <laughs> we'll look at that gap later. Is Trevor looking at gaps again? Pretty good for me right there. I'm talking. Darwin, Tom, Tom, have you calculated the air again? But What's our total length right there? Where's our kick? You, you can tell who still has their earplugs ear in. <laughs> Why are you talking so loud, Tom? They're 93, oh, an inch and three quarters. And let's just go seven inches. 
What is that, a conversion calculator? I thought you were an engineer, Tom. 4.9 gallons. <laughs> Your size? Yeah. So roughly 10 gallons of air. One York style compressor will, should easily do it, belt driven, with an electric sound. That's your soap bottle? Yep. Hmm. Okay. Moment of truth? I'm just going to explode. Why does it sound like it's coming right off the other side? We got a leak right here. Do we got a pen we can mark these? There's one. Not scary at all. Got another one right there. The Gonna try to fix it with the MIG or the TIG? We'll see where the leaks are. Right, right there a little bit. Is it bulging a little? Yes. Okay, yeah. you got wow. all the leaks? You think? think? So. Pull the air and see if it moves. <laughs> yeah, it, it does have a bulge to it. Yes, very much so. We Not need to guess it's inside it. We need an internal bracing. Yeah, drill through. You put some 3 8 inch rod through there. And then plug weld. Yeah, and just on both sides. Yeah. I it'll the, look like a rivet. I wouldn't have. <laughs> well, that'd be a cool look, like rivets everywhere. I think we should do that first, but not right now, not today. But first, some other time. Yes. I'll say a bow again. We'll check it in a minute when I fix these. So we're pressure testing number two. We had seven leaks to fill the first time, which is honestly not that bad. It was less than I thought it was gonna be. What about Casey? I'm impressed. You did good. All right, well, here we go. go Round two. So far, so good. Nothing. Damn. Ooh, a little Boeing That's action. not sketchy at all. Nothing? Just a little bit. Nothing? No. Oh, no. that one. All right. Ta-da. 135. What? Okay. So that's, that's plenty. That's, yeah, that's good enough. So this tank is flexing quite a bit, more than I anticipated. But once I thought about it, it makes sense. I was forced to look at it by Casey and Tom Tom. Thanks guys. You're welcome. It was like an intervention. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill holes all the way through this and put rod through there and weld both ends of it and that will pin it together. It's an old derby trick, we call it pinning the frame. <laughs> it's literally what it is we're gonna be doing that. We drilled the holes, we chamfered the holes, we did some sanding on the holes. We need to do some more sanding on the bottom of the holes, and then we're gonna start welding these together. We just need to, we just need to sand the bottom. Should we flip that sand up and then weld from... Sure! Why are you talking so loud, Tom? Hey guys, here's what I think we should do. Perfect. I am cutting out the rods that we are gonna stick through those frame rails and weld each side to pin the rails together so it can't expand when we fill it with air. As we found out, it does. So I gotta cut out 32 and 9 16 inch rods. What about giant client? That's too good of an explanation. We're not used to that around here. How does that look? Does that look like a rivet? I'd be surprised if we got holes. Except for in that one. Well, that's not good. Oh. Loud. That works. Here. Check this joint, I'm kind of like. 
I think this comes from the bottom side. Very nice work, Rudy. Fine, sir. How's the weather today, Ed? It's a little windy today. Yesterday was nice. 60 degrees, no clouds. And if we get a call, we'll get him out. Man, that's loud. Claw hammer for the wind. Baby claw hammer. Baby claw hammer. Look who joined us in the shop. What's up? I'm a spectator on this stuff. So what's, what's new? Nothing much, you know. Just hanging out, chilling. You left. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How are you even getting by without that? I don't know. Um, I don't that know looks like the essential. Let's try a little there. lighter. Look at this. We even marked it for you. It got your name got spelled two different ways because whoever wrote on it wasn't sure which way it was. Okay, who wrote on it? Well, for one, what one was right? What do you think was right, Rudy? The I. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe it's the Y. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so almost the entire crew is abandoning Rudy right now because we got a job up like two hours away, the other side of Zion. Yeah. So we're just leaving Rudy to just do this thing all by his lonesome. Good luck, Have Rudy. Have fun. Good luck. Call me if you need me. Yeah, I will. <laughs> we're going up into the mud and snow. And I'm going home for dinner. So Rudy got the air tanks welded up yesterday. Got the pins in here to make them stronger. And today we're going to finished welding them up and we're gonna put them together. We're gonna have a frame by the end of today. So I am cleaning up the frame capture and use the box of frame, getting all the slag off from the plasma cutter, nice and clean and ready to weld. Time that. That was good. Let me tell you the value of Tom. Tom can draw pictures on a computer, send files over to a company that will cut these out. The company that Tom sent those files to is Flog and they are a friend of the channel. And uh, look at these. These are going to go out here because we've got a butt weld all the way around, 360 degrees. We're going to have to lay these on the inside and the outside. Almost like you planned it. That came out beautiful. That's perfect. And then these are on the inside, so we're actually adding even more structure on the inside also. So this lays in there like that before we put the cap over the top of it. Look how strong that's going to be. It's approved by a whole shop full of redneck engineers. And a nuclear engineer. <laughs> this lands in the hole but off center. It's okay. Or do you want to grind this smooth and then re weld one to the center here so it looks even? Nope. This is not my usual operation. <laughs> I would rather slide that like that but then first. The things. But I don't even care. That looks super good right there. That's going to bug me forever. Is it? Yeah. If you want, I can put them off. So we're gonna highlight it too, no, so you see it. We're gonna do them all like all different, like all over it, everyone. Welcome to our world, Casey. Not my monkeys, not my circus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. Okay. So this piece, we're boxing this in. This frame's only ending up 27 inches wide. We've got 45 degree of wheel turn. So the frame has to be able to fit inside that. This is the end frame. Look how narrow that is. So the cab that he has to fit in is that wide. Yeah. Wow. Better go on a diet. It's gonna be like a Cobra attack helicopter. <laughs> It's all right if it goes down. We could square it up and do everything with it upside down. Upside down. Then put the skin on weld in place and then and flip it over. Then flip it. Instead and of flipping it twice. The lift to flip it. Yeah. Just once. Then you have to flip it one time. You're absolutely correct. For, For once. Oh, yeah, you're stuck. You're out. Okay. Okay, well. Yes. 217 and three quarters. 217 and three quarters on the nose. Wow. wow. Dang. I don't think we've ever pulled the tape the whole way. We just cut. 
all the pieces and then weld it together. On all those random lengths, evened out, and it came to exactly the same thing. Oh, yeah. wow. So we've got to come. Got to drag that back. back. You got a big hammer to monk or? Okay. Okay, well. All right. So we spent some time and we got the frame square. And now we're just going to start rolling them together. This one's much okay. closer. So you're not, you're gonna want gloves. See how much I can do with this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're gonna see what he can do with that. Woo! Okay. Yeah, give it yep. time. Hey, okay. let me give it a weld. So Casey saved our bacon a couple of times. He told us to build the frame upside down. We built the frame upside down. It worked out way better. What else did you do? Chain and bar. Chain, Chain and bar. So anyway, we got the frame. We got where we wanted to be today. The frame is boxed up. It's square and it's straight. And tomorrow we're going to set it on the axles. All right, it is probably day three of working on the heavy wrecker. So the skid plate is gonna be integral to the frame on this. We're gonna be welding that on there. We've gotta get this spread apart, so we're gonna get right to it. That's good. Okay. We built it. We made a thing. Okay. Right 28 quarter. 28, oh, give it one more little, you're at 28 and eight. Okay. Good. And it's like just over 28 and 3 eighths. Okay, so maybe we can start tacking the plate on this end and, and kind of let a little over. pressure off from it. You guys are doing great. I would yeah. not lean over that jack. <laughs> yeah. I don't do any chin ups on that thing. So I want one inch weld on both sides of this because we're going to be putting some pressure on this in a second. Well, that's not as pretty as Rudy's. Right there. You're right about eight inches. Uh, uh, we planned it. 
Not. I can't believe this is smaller than that face you It looks huge. <laughs> Okay, so it has been a busy week and we have got a lot done. Big thanks to Casey Liddell for coming down and working his tail off all week. The rest of the crew, thank you so much. We got this frame where we wanted it. We didn't get the links put on it, but we got a couple of rescues that we had to do that put us a little behind. Thanks for watching. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, it's